and Davis with a kick. Never got there. It's been that kind of a day for the Aggies. And Appalachian State with the upset of Texas A&M here at Kyle Field. 24-20, Alabama. Three seconds left. Foster snapped to Haynes in the pocket. Fires right side of the end zone. Incomplete. Arnold with the coverage. Alabama defeats Texas A&M. Connor Wigman. He is the quarterback in the third for the Aggies this season. Daniels keeps it fumbled, and it's picked up by the Aggies. Run into the end zone. Devontae Richardson, touchdown, A&M. Connor Wigman to the back of the end zone. Moves, caught in one hand. Wow. Unbelievable catch. <laughs> seniors, that's a great win for what you're going out, and you young guys, we can be, man. That was the number five team in the country. And you're lined up. If we will stick together and do what we do and make our adjustments, we can be at the top of this thing in, in no time. It's a beautiful Saturday here at Kyle Field. I want y'all to feel this today, man. Trust yourself right now. Let's go have fun. Come on, look. Day one. Toss that right for me. They were one of only two teams in the country last year with a sub 500 record despite having a top 25 defense. For this season, I think AM has a chance to bounce back and make some noise because Texas AM has the offensive talent to be one of the better teams in the country. Let the defense do what it does. AM could be a double digit win team. Talk and chatter is all part of the build-up to a season. But this team isn't listening. They're fully aware of what they can be. The expectation is to be the best in the nation. And we don't feel like that's like a big burden because we know we have the potential to do it. So we are just coming together, getting better every day, every practice. 100% effort every day, so to get that done. I believe Coach Fisher says it a lot. Nobody without physical issues. That's the mindset that we need to have, especially up front in the trenches. You want to be dominant because that's going to change the tone of the game either way it go. If you come out dominant, hey, it's going to be a long, rough day for the other side of the ball. Uh, best DBs in the country. Uh, best uh, safety, uh, best yeah. corners in the country, man. Real talk. No bell. No rap. All right. Coach, for the sake of time, we want to just go straight to questions. Yeah, it'd be fine. Down front. What are the qualities that Bobby Petrino has that made you want him on your staff, and how do you think he will help your team this year? We've been very productive as a head coach, as an offensive coordinator, and also philosophically a lot of the things he believes and how he looks at the game and the way we did. Like I said, we've known each other a long time. I mean, and studied each other's film a long time. Very similar in philosophical uh, nature and a very proven guy who has a great mind for the game and does a great job teaching. Well, Coach, I get, since I get the first question, I'll ask the one that everybody wants to ask. What made you decide to come to A&M, and how has your rapport been with Jimbo since you've been here? Well, the first part of that question is um, does involve Coach Fisher. You know, uh, my respect for him and our ability to compete against each other, um, my knowledge of his success and what he likes to do offense, uh, made it very, very attractive. It's exciting to to see the talent that we have and the and the weapons that we have. We have power. We have speed. We have agility, um, quickness, everything. Give them the ball and let them go make plays. That's, that's that simple. I mean, so I was trying to tell Evan the other day, I mean, just throw a hitch and let him go 60 yards. I mean, that's the best feeling as a quarterback. Certainly in the early part of the season, I think it's manageable. And there's, there's a chance for them to build some momentum early in the year. So I definitely do think they're a bounce back team. It's just a question of if Petrino is able to do what he can do and has done in the past, his design really good offenses that score a lot of points. I do think this has a chance to be a good team. The other thing is, I know you asked here, and we didn't tell what name a starting quarterback. Connor will be the, to be the quarterback, the starting quarterback. But he and Max both had uh, 
great camps, played very, very well. Uh, very tough decision as far as that goes. I want nobody to be injured, but when you get two quality guys like we have, it really makes a big difference. So uh, in that regard, so we'll get ready to play and then go on from this week. Man, C. Wick, I just expect him to be the leader that he's been showing us and that he's developed into. Um, I know he always had it in him, but just the way that he's been expressing himself a little bit more uh, to the team and really showing his will and showing his want to, you know what I'm saying, and how much he really wants to win um, has definitely been impressive to me. But uh, I just expect him to be nothing but greatness, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's no pressure or nothing like that, but he's a great player. He's a great guy, you know what I'm saying? So I just expect him to just be him. Uh, he's got a great release, very quick, and, and has done a nice job of distributing the ball, getting his players involved. I feel like everyone knows what's going on now. I mean, we, got, we were all freshmen last year, or the majority of us, and just to be able to get that experience under belt and know, know what to expect for this coming year, I feel like we got the best receiving core in the country. I mean, I put my guys over anyone. One-on-one -on -one plays, I'm giving them the ball, I'm giving them a chance, and nine times out of ten, they're going to go make a play for me. There's a new flair to how the Aggies will enter Kyle Field in 2023. It's been quite the hot topic in the offseason among the 12th man. Amid the tweaks, some of the old staples will still be there. Ready and now. The Aggies are counting on a new tune to bring them down the tunnel. So they called on an Aggie. Colin Padalecki, class of 20, will provide the instrumental. These days, he's part of a popular, versatile music duo. When I say Kyle Field, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Energy. Like, I, I, I think some people like to like overhype, you know, certain stadiums and stuff, but I mean, you got 100,000 people filling up the stadium every Saturday and like everyone is just going nuts. Like you got the towels, you got the band, you got this like unbelievable stadium that's packed every Saturday. Like there's nothing like it. I've never been to another sporting event that has as much energy as this stadium. That will get the team, 130 guys out of the locker room, into the top of the tunnel. When I got that text, I was like, oh, that's awesome just to be a part of anything and in football because it's such a massive deal. But uh, it didn't register that it was like the walkout, walkout song. Because, like, you know, I figured, you know, they'd get like another power, like another, you know, radio song to introduce it. But uh, yeah, it didn't really register with me right away. Once they are toward the bottom of the tunnel, we have another series of, of uh, audio that will play to get us to the bottom of the tunnel. I got to, one, bring my A game. Two, I have to match the energy that's expected of me and, like, really show out. And, like, three, give a few options and, and really, uh, you know, explore every single channel to make sure, you know, I bring my best and, you know, it aligns perfectly with what Kyle Field needs. I'm thinking of every other, you know, just college stadium or, or college game day where it's not a radio song. And I don't, I mean, I could be dead wrong, but I don't think I've heard of anything like this. So when the challenge was presented to me, I was like, oh, this is a chance for me and the university to do something that no one's ever done before. And like, it just made me so excited to bring a new original energy to a place that, you know, is famous on its own. The Pulse. Texas A&M football is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. It is finally game day in Aggieland. The sounds of a Saturday at Kyle are back and can probably be heard and felt well beyond the Brazos Valley. I mean, you got four or five generation families out here coming out, they've been coming here since forever. You know, they're ready to go and yell for the eggs. 
I mean, it's just the greatest place to watch college football in America. I think most people that come here, leave here, thinking, God, it's the greatest place in America to watch college football. So we're ready, man. No time. Within the ranks of this team, a voice is missing. The Aggies sadly lost defensive ends coach Terry Price this summer. Without a doubt, we missed his voice. I mentioned that as celebration, that if, if, if a guy did something wrong or a guy did something well, you can hear TP's voice always echo over in Bryant, Texas. So definitely missed his voice. He'll be missed forever, but he's going to live through us. And I think that's the great responsibility we have as a unit is to make sure that we make, make him proud. Practice for him, we play for him, we even carry ourselves off the field for him because, like, if you know Coach Price, like, Coach Price cares about us, like, just being good men. You know, when I first thought about that, it's kind of difficult because, you know, <laughs> TP was like my closest friend on the staff. You know, it's hard. It's hard, but I know he's looking down on us. He was one of the best for every one of his players. He missed everything about TP, he missed his presence. You miss his camaraderie on his staff. You miss his compassion for the players. You miss his overall love for A&M and, &M and what, he, what he means to A&M, what he meant to us, uh, what he meant to his family. Just everything about uh, TP was fun to be around. Everything was. I was quiet when I first came in here, you know, like he said, man, just let him hear your voice, you know, because one day you're going to be in the meeting with a, a gym or a Fortune 500 company. Sorry. And he said, just be heard. Like, don't, you don't have to mumble or whisper everything. Just talk and say it with confidence. And I, that, I carry that every day, you know, just being myself. We definitely made a promise to our, to, within the D-line group to play hard for eight seconds in representation of his number 88 that he used to wear. So just carrying his name, like keeping it in our head to play for him and be great men off the field for him. We tell ourselves that every day. We break it out. As a team, we say 88, that's what we play for. Where do you understand? understand what I'm wearing. Make sure his presence felt the man. You understand that? Gone but forever within the hearts of this team. TP was an Aggie wearing number 88 when he played in the maroon and white. And the D-line will play for him this season. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Like we said before, this game's about the inches, man. This game's about the inches. You've got to fight for the inches. Toughness, effort, discipline, pride, and grit. That's the key. The secret is there is no secret. We play to the echo of the whistle. We win the last two seconds of every play. Trust your preparation, men. Trust yourself, trust your preparation. Play fast, loose, see it, react, play. Don't get bored in the game. Run through the finish line on every play. Not to the line, through the line. On every play. Listen, guys, it starts today. Change the narrative right now. Change the narrative right now. Who you are, what you are, one play at a time. That's the only way you're gonna do it. One inch at a time. Fight for the inches. Be who we're going to be. Let's get after the ring. All right, get in here. Hey, let's go, make it a break. Hey, fan on dude, one, two, three. Man. Man. Let's go, man.
During the team entrance, the pyrotechnics would not quite light up. No worries. The fireworks show would begin just a bit later when the Aggie offense stepped on the field. Wigman's first pass. He ducks, runs up the middle. 25, 30, stumbles, regains, steps back outside the hashes to the 34-yard line. Have to learn. Connor Wigman can run the football. Float. Noah. Texas A&M has a 7-0 lead. Seven plays, 85 yards. I need three of them. I need three of them. That's how we do it. That's one. And out of the backfield, caught Prosky Merritt. Hit by Edger and Cooper, shy of the 20-yard line. When Coop hits you, you feel it. Footwork stays square. Good footwork stays square. Good finish. Fight the finishes. Fight the finishes. Let's go. Wigman shot down the middle. Stewart touchdown. E. Stew, baby, from 35. Touchdown. That's what you call a go round. Every time we touch the ball. Now Randy Bond, the extra points. It's a first and ten from their own 43. Another rush. Hit in the backfield. Tackle for loss. Albert Regis. In motion right to left goes Hickson. Fake to him. Krosky Merritt on second level now. 15 to 10, 5 touchdown. 27 yard run. Right now, we know something they can do about it. They can't do nothing about it. Here comes New Mexico. From the right side, Wigman lets it go. Caught by Walker, tight ropes the sideline. His first catch as an Aggie is acrobatic. Wigman shot right side. That's what I'm talking about. 20 to 7 AM with an extra point from Randy Bond. From their own 25. Hopkins throws left side. Too high. Incomplete. And fielded at his own 33. Right up the middle. 45. In midfield. Across midfield. At the 40. Amai is still on his feet. Keeps his balance. Comes to the outside. Shoots inside. Inside the 25. Finna score right here to what? Third and one from the one. Stumbling. Give Le'Veon Moss touchdown. Perfect. What I told you. 47 bangs it through. Pocket collapses, so he rolls to his right. Hit as he throws intercepted. Josh DeBerry with the pick at the 36-yard line. The pressure leads to the pick. Let's go. Wigman to the end zone, floats for Noah, he got the foot down, touchdown Noah Thomas, number three Again. with his third here in the half. Again, touchdown Aggies. This is a third and nine. It's a handoff, nowhere. Edgery Cooper, and they'll take their last time out. Possibly the final play of this first half. 48 yard attempt by Randy Bond. Blocks into the New Mexico sideline. 35 to 7, Texas AM leads New Mexico after one half here at Kyle Field. Hey, first thing is, hell of a job. That's the way to go out and execute the offense, all right? And play fast. All right, you guys are playing fast. You're being precise on your routes. All right, running backs, you're doing a good job on your on your blitz pickup. All right, just eliminate the one holding. But other than that, man, we've had some great pickups, which is allowing us to throw the ball down the field. You've got to dominate this second half. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, sir. One play at a time. Don't get sloppy. Don't get greedy. Fundamentally sound, alignments, assignments, technique, toughness, effort, discipline, pride, and grit. Every damn play. No, really. Give them no inches. Play your asses off. You understand me? Yes, sir. Play your asses off and finish this damn game. Asked to finish. Aggies didn't really start right in the third quarter, but 
it didn't take long for them to get back on track. Daniels flanks Wigman to the rights. Jake Johnson is the tight end on the rights. Wigman, slant, caught in traffic. Anias, his first catch, and a flag, possible targeting. Wigman, pocket, right side, wide open. There's Anias, dragged out of bounds at the 20-yard line, a 27-yard gain. Back-to-back -back catches for Anias. Three receivers all to the left side. Wigman fires left side. He's got Evan again. Touchdown, Aggies. E. Stew, baby. They went right back to it. Went right back to the corner. This time he threw it on time. Perfect throw. Touchdown, Aggies. Nick rolls to his left. Butte sideways, spinning to the 35-yard line. Why song? And he's taken down by who else? Number 12, the 12th man, Sam Matthews. Boy, he got down there quick. Christian Washington, the back in the pistol. Hawkins sacks. Shamar Turner takes him down at the 28-yard line. So from the 39 of New Mexico, Ruben Owens right side, around the right end, stays on his feet as he broke a couple of tackles and all the way to the 25-yard line, a 14-yard gain for Ruben Owens. On a second and eight from the 12, Max spins to his right. The left-hander throws on the run, complete to Moose. Moose avoids a tackle and gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. Tell you, there were two great moves here. One of them started with Max Johnson avoiding the rush, rolled to his right, got Moose, and then Moose put on two moves that got him into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. Randy Bond's field goal puts the finishing touches on this one. The opening Saturday night from Kyle Field closes out, and the Aggies look strong in a 52-10 win. Aggies 52, New Mexico 10, opening up 2023 with an impressive victory over the Lobos. Feels good, man. Want to know? That's what we do. That's the standard now. It's the standard. All right, let's go. Great win. Great win. Love the way we started the game out. Defense, they got a couple little things. You got your feet on the ground, set them in there. Offense, you scored the first five times you had the ball. You had a touchdown. You're very efficient. But in the second half, I didn't like how we come out, guys. We come out sloppy. We got too many guys on the field. Right off the bat, get a penalty on offense. We just scored five drives. Get in the hole. Defense, we give up a drive. Drive all the way down. Have what? Three personal fouls. That does not help us win, OK? But guys, just keep playing with efficiency. Listen, everybody, this is a long season. Everybody's going to eat. This one's behind us. We celebrate it tonight, 24 hours from now, this game is over. We're getting ready for Miami the next week. We've got a heck of a road trip to go next week. Down to Miami, we go. Miami starts tomorrow. I don't care with nothing. Miami starts tomorrow. They start tomorrow. Let's get ready for this next week. Hey, Bambi on three, one, two, three, Bambi.